When Portland cement is mixed with sand, aggregate, and water, a chemical reaction called hydration takes place. The extent to which this reaction is completed determines the strength, durability, and the density of the concrete. Uh, the other big advantage that uh, ARCS forms have is in uh, uh, when the unit is cured in the uh, uh, insulated environment, uh, you actually end up with higher strength concrete uh, than you would if it was cured in the normal lab environment or in the normal manner where the forms are stripped after two or three days after the concrete is placed. Nothing matches the time-proven reliability of properly placed concrete. Here's what one ARCH user has to say. In our previous stick-built home, we were heating 1,800 square feet, and it was costing us over $100 a month to heat it. In our ARCH's home, we're heating 3,600 square feet, and it's costing us less than $50 a month to heat it. And not only does the ARCH system keep heat in, but it also keeps noise out. The girls find it much quieter. In fact, when we're in a washroom, we have to keep the door open a little bit to hear because we can't hear the call bells in there. It's so quiet. Before you place concrete, you want to make one last check to make sure everything is ready. Is the alignment system properly installed and are the scaffolds and guards secure? Is all form support in place? Is reinforcement installation complete? Are all openings properly supported? Are all service penetrations installed? Are all taping operations complete, including vertical tape at the first and third webs on each side of 90 degree corners and on the first web on each side of fixed 45s and adjustables? Have string lines been placed for alignment and the walls aligned accordingly? Has the top course interlock mechanism been covered? The concrete placement rate is affected by a wide range of factors, such as daytime temperature, slump, temperature of the fluid concrete, amount of reinforcement, aggregate size, and the use of admixtures. The main thing you have to watch for in the field is slump. ARCS recommends using concrete with a slump of four to six inches. Be sure to discuss your mix design needs with your concrete supplier. You can use almost any standard method to place concrete in arcs forms, including truck chute and crane and bucket, but the most popular system is the pump. When you use a pump to place concrete, be sure the discharge tube is equipped with either double 90 degree elbows or a reducer or both. This configuration helps reduce the free fall velocity of the concrete as it enters the wall cavity. When placing concrete with 4-inch forms, we suggest you use a flexible 3-inch line in order to reduce concrete splash. Be sure to wear appropriate personal protective equipment when placing concrete as required by your local safety authority. When placing concrete, be careful not to point the discharge tube directly into the corners. Fill the areas beneath the windows first then work away from the sides of the windows, allowing the natural flow of the fluid concrete to carry it into the corners. Typically, you place concrete in four-foot lifts. Consolidation is needed where there is a possibility the concrete may contain voids. In particular, the slump may affect the need for mechanical consolidation of the concrete. The demonstration you see here shows the effects of consolidation on 4-inch slump concrete and 7-inch slump concrete. When an internal vibrator is placed in 4-inch slump concrete, the pockets of air or small voids disappear as the air rises to the concrete's upper surface. As the air is removed, the concrete settles to a lower level. With 7-inch slump, you can see that the concrete has few voids and that the vibrator makes little difference. Use a vibrator with a head size between 3 quarter and 1 inch. For best results, drop the vibrator quickly in the full depth of the lift and remove it slowly. The Portland Cement Association recommends a retraction rate of 3 inches per second. Consolidate after every successive concrete lift. 
Following these simple steps will maximize wall strength by ensuring that the reinforcement has been properly embedded. Tweak the wall alignment after each successive lift using the previously installed string line as a guide. If the wall is to be continued for further stories, terminate the concrete 8 inches below the top of the forms. Make sure the necessary cold joint reinforcement has been supplied. Leave the exposed concrete rough to provide a better bond with the next lift. If the wall is being terminated, Arcs Wall Systems recommends that you finish the concrete one and a half inches below the form tops to allow room for a sill plate. The easiest way to do this is to make a trowel by attaching a piece of plywood to a short length of sill material. Simply slide the trowel along the top of the forms to make the appropriate bed for the sill plate. When the top of the concrete has been finished, install any anchor bolts as per code or design specifications. In some jurisdictions, you may be called upon to fasten the roof trusses down with embedded hurricane strap anchors. Follow the manufacturer's directions when installing these products. We talked earlier about the forming requirements of gable-ended roofs. The example you see here is provided with wooden embeds to allow for subsequent fastening of roof framing members running perpendicular to the gable. There are three last tasks you need to carry out after concrete placement is finished. Recheck the wall alignment with the string line and make any necessary adjustments. Clean all footings, slab and floor surfaces of any concrete splash. Clean the alignment system with a rag or leather glove within an hour of placing concrete. Before we close this section, let's take a moment to go over the points we have just covered. Review the pre-placement checklist before placing concrete. Use the proper concrete mix design. Use the necessary personal protective equipment. Place the concrete in successive lifts. If required, consolidate concrete after each successive lift. Check alignment against the string line after each successive lift. Terminate the concrete appropriately. Remove concrete splash from floors and equipment when you are done. When we come back, we'll talk about related installations. Uh, in running the electrical, we put the wall conduit for the electrical inside of the ARCS wall system, which, uh, as it turned out, would have been much better for us to have run it, routering it into the wall after the fact. Uh, the time it took in cutting out boxes and, uh, and stacking the forms with the conduit in the way uh, would have for us minimized it considerably had we just cut it in the wall. If we were to go back and do this system again, we would most definitely uh, install it after the fact router and in the wall, probably bringing the electrical into the main electrical room and then distributing it inside the building coming down from above rather than underneath the slab.